Welcome, my new master. Huh? Well, you are the one that opened the door, aren't you? Uh, <sighs> your name is Midoriya. Yes? How do you... Perfect! <laughs> ah, great. Uh, are you my quirk? Quirk? What? Oh, oh, right, right, right. He did say something about that, didn't he? Yes, yes I am! How lucky are you to finally awaken your quirk at the age of... Uh, how old are you? Fourteen. Fourteen! <sighs> anyway, yes, I... We have been waiting for such a long time. <laughs> I, I'm confused. I'm your quirk. Yeah, I get that, but... What kind of quirk are you? Hmm. Let's see. I'm a creation, sentient... Type, you could say. What? Oh, yes. Have you ever played... Hmm. A video game before? An RPG of some kind? No. What? <laughs> what? <sighs> he never told me about this. Who? Never mind, Matt. Ugh. Hmm. Anyway, pick your class and subclass. What's that? <laughs> oh. Why? Why did you have to trust me to such a... Uh, I think you put it the best way. Noob! Uh, I'm... Uh, are you not my quirk? Yes, I'm your quirk. <sighs> okay. Here. He said mm, you'd be best as a fire subclass mm, Echo Knight. Uh, what? Can you please explain to me what those are? <sighs> I can't believe I gotta explain this. <clears throat> Either way, a fire class is one who, you could say, is a jack of all trades. Versatile in all matter of weapons, armor, blah blah blah. Okay, what about the Echo Knight? I am getting to that. Echo Knight? It's pretty much. Yeah, pretty much you making a second you. To help fight or whatnot. However, since you are just starting out, it's going to be rather weak, not being able to take much damage. Oh. Well, technically, it can take a lot of damage, but only can take it once. Oh. Okay. Anything else I need to know? Like, what are the capabilities of this new quirk? Well, sentience, sentient creation type, as well as healing, you could say. What? Oh, yes. You see, this quirk... In particular, it will allow you to not only train, but gather weapons, armor, magic, potions, treasure, and even possibly companions. What's that supposed to mean? You could either... Mm, 
befriend whatever you find here if you're lucky enough or you could bring other people with you once you're strong enough what do you mean it takes stamina energy that you already have to at the very least be here so and since it's your quirk you allowing people to enter will also drain you of your energy oh uh, how long can I stay in here oh indefinitely if anything you have Hmm. Let's just say one day here is the equivalent of a year. What? <sighs> a, a day out there is a year in here. Oh. Really? But what about my... Don't worry about aging. That won't happen. Since you are the master of this place, you don't have to worry about any true repercussions. If you get killed, you are just sent all the way back to where you were before, as well as losing your weapons and other things you've collected, which can be picked up if, when you arrive at the exact place in which you died. Yeah, reclaim them. You can leave whenever you want. As well, so... <laughs> that's a plus, I suppose. Oh. And, yes. However, as soon as you leave, the whole... Dungeon... Resets. What? Oh, yes, as soon as you leave, the dungeon resets in reverse to how it was before you showed up. Oh, so it's just one dungeon? No. What? Though, yes, this is one of the dungeons. There are countless in which you should use for training, gathering materials, until you go to the Master Dungeon, which will be the most powerful of all compared to all every single dungeon you've tried, let alone the one you're in right now. Oh. Yes. So, what this means is, once you see that you are ready, I shall test your, your strength, dexterity, and so on and so forth, to see if you truly are capable of surviving the master dungeon. Oh, okay. So, what do I do to complete these other dungeons? You must defeat the dungeon boss. The main boss of the dungeon. In which you will be given a choice. Uh, what do you mean? Well, each dungeon is going to be different significantly or slightly, like a monster that you didn't see before, or a completely different tundra inferno area that you are not prepared to face in your first try. Oh. Okay. That's good to know. Yes. And, as you can imagine, it can be very difficult. So, it's said that your reward after defeating the dungeon boss, you shall have a choice to restart the dungeon yourself, take control of the dungeon, and I mean total control of the dungeon you just completed, or at the very least, you can make alterations and whatnot. 
Uh, what's that mean? It makes you the dungeon master, in which you can make stronger monsters or weaker monsters. It depends on how you really feel. But yes, you can restart the dungeon and continue the story, in which you can redo the dungeon, though you won't gather as much experience points. What's that? I'll explain that later. Alright. Okay. Good. I love manners. <clears throat> Either way, yes. Once you defeat the dungeon boss, you will be directed towards the dungeon core, in which you can choose where just to restart the dungeon and keep entering in said dungeon or take full control of the dungeon. Even making it so it's pretty much a home away from home, you could say. As you can imagine, the dungeons can alter their shapes depending on how they were uh, crafted before. Who made the dungeons the way they are now? Oh, the Demon King. Oh. What? So, wait, was... Is he this person that you keep referring to? <sighs> yes. Yes, he is. So, he's the reason why... Yep. But, why me? How did he... Wait, how do you even know my name? How do you even tell you? How do you... I, I understand you have questions. <sighs> this is going to be a while. Long story short, the Dungeon Master created this space with his quirk. He, honest to God, made this quirk specifically for you. Wow. Really? Yes. On um, how it was transferred to you. Mm, that's debatable, but still. Uh, wait, so it has to. Yes. Maybe you were born quirkless. He had to give you a quirk first. Wait, what? Yes. The, no, 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 that, that's impossible. You can't give someone a quirk. Or, oh, yes. It is very much possible. You see... Uh... Your lips are moving, but I can't hear you. <laughs> I guess I can't disclose that information to you. At least not yet. Oh. Mm, sorry, young Midoriya. <sighs> but first things first. You need some weak monsters to kill. Let's see. Ah, uh, yep, yep. This this dungeon is perfect for noobs like you. What's a noob? Ugh. Don't worry about it. At the very least, it should not be that difficult. I'm still confused. Don't be. All right, let's see. This one has, oh, shriekers. Perfect. Uh, what are those? Well, they are the weakest of the weak. I mean, <laughs> though they are quite intimidating in size and appearance, they can't even attack. They can't even move let alone barely see. Uh, so how's it attack? Well, it 
screams. Hence the name Shrieker. Oh. Is that... Is that it? Yes. Though it is completely annoying, mind you. Which means you have to kill them quick if you don't want to risk going deaf. Oh. So. If anything... How would you like to take them on? What, what do you mean? Well, weapons? Armor? What, what would you like? Huh, you said take them down quickly, so I guess something that's light? Uh, what would be the best way to, you know, kill them? Possibly a sword. Hmm, Eastern sword. Ah, katana. That should do wonderfully. Oh, yes. I shall also let you know that you also had the privilege of acquiring certain skills with ease. What? Think of it like this. You try making something and you fail. You still get the credit for making it, as well as the experience required to grow. So you're saying, uh, say you want to be a thief or an assassin type, all you have to do is complete certain actions that they would do. Like a blacksmith, they do is create something, regardless if you make something that's good, it's the fact that you made something that allows you to actually gain the experience, in which slowly but surely you get better at it, to a point where you could possibly make legendary, if not even god-killing weapons. What? Oh, yes. I, uh, oh. I, I can't... The Demon King is the one who's given me such... Oh, yes. This part of me wonders what in the world he was thinking. But... Yeah, they chose you. They've given me your information. How did they... Don't worry about it. If anything, only worry about surviving and not dying too often. Uh, oh, uh, uh, right. Good. As yes, Izuku taking on Shriekers. Yeah, it's not something he really anticipated doing. He, especially when he actually meets them and they are screaming like hell. Izuku, he hasn't really collected many other weapons and armors, hasn't even came across a mimic yet, since this is the lowest of the low dungeons. Though he is somewhat getting used to it, uh, he's starting to get more and more sick of hearing those things constantly scream at him. So, when it comes to killing them, he gets more and more used to it, feeling less and less guilty. Though they are technically defenseless, weak as hell monsters. <laughs> yeah. His guilt slowly but surely leaves him. So, really? One of the things he actually does acquire from them, surprisingly, is the f fungal matter. Only thing is, he doesn't know how to really butcher them to extract it. 
and wanted to test out this whole privilege he's been given, he butchers the Shriekers for their fungus material. And I don't mean butchers like a meat butcher. I mean butcher as in he ruins so many Shrieker corpses that it is kind of fucked up. It's, it's kind of like he's just grinding them into mush and hoping it's a good result. And again, with them being such weak monsters, he doesn't really get much experience points. Though, experience points nonetheless. Once he finishes off the grunts, he goes for the boss. In which... It's still a shrieker. It's still s sadly, pathetically easy. And though, yes, he does get the dungeon core, he alternates it just so he can actually have a bit of a ho home away from home. Let's just say this dungeon only had like 10 rooms. He's a good has the key to 10 rooms, but he can still choose on how it's really utilized. And though, yes, this is still one of the weaker dungeons, he does get gold and jewels and other amenities like potions. Even scrolls that have magic that he thinks he could utilize, but, eh. At the very least, he doesn't really need any of that stuff yet. Next dungeon, he notices, wow, there are a lot of owls here. One thing is, these owls, yes, since they are still birds, they can fly, they can hit up talons, and they see him before he sees them. And still being owls, they do have the added benefit of, <laughs> better night vision than he has him noticing that every time they fly by him not only are they clawing at him with their talons they're turning off all the torch lights making it even harder for him to literally see Izuku seeing this is more of a challenge him learning their tactics though very late when it comes there he's running out of light, he decides to use one of the scrolls in which it is a fire spell. Him utilizing it and turning on each and every one of the torches that they burn out. And for anything, Izuku, seeing how cowardly they are, especially thinking, okay, they just like doing hit and run tactics, so it kind of makes sense. He must be one of the weaker monsters as well, but at least he can attack. Yeah, it's not nice. Izuku decides to use Echo Knight for a first time and see what it can really do. It gets killed by one of the owls trying to attack Izuku. And as you can imagine, he's a girl. He is shocked at this. Like, I didn't even get to use this thing. But he has gathered a pretty good idea. Knowing that they're going to go out their torches over and over and over again. Just so they can get a better chance of attacking him. He decides, huh, I wonder what would happen if I let them. Because he knows one thing. He's their opportunist. Ugh. Our opportunistic. As long as it's not too dangerous, in which they know they're going to survive, they ain't going to go for it. So as you can imagine, like he's helpless as they keep turning off the lights, chances are they're all going to try to gang up upon him at once. His plan comes to fruition as he 
unleashes a wind attack that breaks their necks. And with that, he literally starts trying on his butchery again. Getting better results, but still it looks like a real mess. Him noticing that he went from novice to eh, kind of butcher. Uh, oh well, let's see how things go in the next room. As he's using this tactic over and over and over again, giving the owls a false sense of confidence, gathering beaks, claws, feathers, even a few eggs every so often, both fertilized and unfertilized. Him actually seeing, okay, this could come in handy sooner or later. Then he notices he does start to get hungry, which, yep, <clears throat> time to have some fresh, least slaughtered eggs. It's not until he reached the boss. He's like, okay, I, I hope it doesn't smell egg in, on my breath. Izuku goes up against this giant ass owl. It's angry. It's obviously stronger than all the others, which will be yeah, it's the same size as any regular owl. So he definitely needs to watch his ass here. So he can't really afford to fuck up on this front. I wish he starts to notice its patterns. It's more cocky than the others because not only is Izuku smaller than it, Izuku, yeah, he's not intimidating at all. He doesn't have any kind of intimidation factor emanating from his body. So, this owl gets cocky to the point where Izuku is flung up a chandelier, uses Hollow Knight to cut off the bearings, and crushes it. The owl is defeated, but also its pride is hurt as it dies. Izuku feeling somewhat bad, but also this is what you get for underestimating me. And due to this victory, Izuku does get the, an actual chest this time. After not only butchering this final boss, but also finding his way to the dungeon core. Again, he's wondering, okay, so how should I change this one? Remembering the eggs he's gathered, in which yeah, he has enough to make a whole rookery. Greasily. So, if anything, he makes it a home for the newly. the soon to be newly owls. And this is about the time where he's like, okay, maybe I should just go home. Realizing he's been gone for at least. Two and a half hours. Him heading home, Inko, she is pretty much like, Oh, how are you? Uh, how was school? He's like, wearing what's wrong? Forgetting that he's still wearing his armor and uh, wielding his katana. Not to mention the scrapes, bruises, and cuts he's accumulated due to the second dungeon. Inko? Of course, she's asking a lot of questions. Izuku, I don't want to answer. Inko, being such a very understanding parent, she, of course, drops the subject. Maybe he's like, okay, are you hungry? Like, no, nah, I had eggs. What? Uh, how? What? Uh, I mean, yes, I'm hungry. I'm starving. 
sadly, Mizugu is wondering, should I tell her about what I've been doing? Huh. Does she need to know? I mean, I trust her. At least I believe I do. Uh, man. I'm not really sure what should... What would be the best course of action here. On one hand... She... Probably going to tell me to stop doing it. On the other hand... <laughs> if this is when something pops out right over Yuzuku's face. Which is his interface throughout the whole dungeon crawler system network. Whatever you want to call it. Is he has unused skill points. And still not knowing much about RPG-esque elements. He does end up looking it up on his handy dandy computer. As he does start... So it's like, okay, so I'll increase my strength as well as my speed and agility and hmm I'm definitely gonna need some more endurance and save him falling asleep and waking up to see that his body is different not only does he get taller he got muscular he got them good gains that takes those dungeons in which he only got like let's say four skill points to really utilize it was his first time and it's easier to level up when you're a newbie When he gets to oh okay, so you can I have this skills gone up, this one too. Mm. When it comes to stealth, I'm not that good at it. Maybe I should practice that more. Inko wondering, okay, what is he talking about? Who is he talking to? And then she sees the interactive HUD. That Izuku's using. Her shocked. But also like, no, no, no. It's better if he tells me about it. If he, if he's not comfortable telling me, I won't pry. It's his business. Being just a wonderful supportive mother. Like we don't know he go to be. The only thing is, when he goes back to school. Everyone knows is okay. You, the glow up is real when it comes to you. What happened? Zuku knowing though he can permit other people to go into his literal quirk. He doesn't want anyone really knowing because hell, yeah. Think about it. No one's really gonna believe him, and he doesn't know if he has. The energy or stamina to truly allow other people in. Let alone, he did end up increasing his intelligence to an extent to the point where he's pretty much like, hmm, if I let people know about the possibilities of my quirk, chances are they're going to try to exploit me. And with this increased intelligence, he starts thinking more along the lines of his relationship with Bakugo. And how, yes, Bakugo was his friend. He hasn't been much of a friend ever since his quirk really awakened. So if anything, he doesn't really talk to Bakugo as much. And after school, Bago does try to bully him, despite his obviously different build, but Izuku just ignores him. When Bago wants to go to, to his notebook, 
Izuku snatches it from him and runs off. Bago soon following him. Luckily, thanks to Izuku's increased speed, he loses Bago and goes back into his dungeon called a quark. Upon uh, arriving, he notices, okay, so uh, let me take a shower and relax a little bit, get my gear ready, and see how the eggs are doing. And yes, he notices uh, still nothing. But also, huh, let me let me go to my next dungeon. In which it's awakened shrubs. And they do attack him, it's just that one, it doesn't hurt nearly as much as Talon's, and two, he's a goose. Hmm. Well, they're all leafy and everything. Hmm. Might as well try fire. Upon realizing that he's doing this, they run for the hills. And though Izuku doesn't want to destroy the environment, he's like, sorry, burn, baby, burn. Pretty much turning them into charcoal. All except one. He notices that, huh. What, what are you uh, doing? Mm. Uh, let's see. You seem to have escaped. I don't know what to really do here. I mean, I could always burn you like the others. It pretty much cowering before Izuku is, is trying to appeal to his merciful side. And with Izuku, I don't want to hurt you right now. Hmm. I wonder. Wait. Yeah, I I think I might know a use for you. Him pretty much picking up the wagon shrub and, and yeah, take taking it on with his journey. When he sees the grand shrub, he's oh, this is gonna be too easy. Him burning it to a crisp as it screams and howls in pain and agony, Izuku just looking at the blaze he's created and pride in his eyes, getting another treasure chest as well as, oh, you know, seeds. I'm wondering, so, awakened shrub seeds. Interesting. I wonder what else I could do here with these babies. As he's gathering his treasure, he realizes he hasn't really done anything when it comes to the treasures he's already gathered. When it comes to the whole healing potions, he sure so hasn't done anything with them. Hell, all these monsters so far are so weak, he doesn't really require any buffs. So, he does something he really should have done after his first couple of dungeons. He pawns the gold and jewels, which is, it is pure gold, and the jewels are, are of uh, pristine, perfect quality. He gets a hefty sum, much to Inko's shock. And wondering, how did you come across all this money? Her remembering his potential quirk and actions. Yeah, you'll tell me once you feel comfortable with telling me. I trust you completely. 
hoping that her son at least stays safe. Of course, like any good parent. As long as you're home safe and don't bring no bullshit home, everything's good with the world. I guess that's how my cousin was. <clears throat> He's a girl. After accumulating enough wealth, he has allowed himself to actually splurge on not only all my memorabilia and such, but also a plot of land with, that uh, you can consider reasonable. This is a it's slightly smaller than Luigi's Mansion. Still massive as all hell, but but more manageable. And this is when he does end up planting the awakened shrub seeds. As he does instruct that one awakened shrub he didn't kill, that they would be in charge of teaching all the others what's what. Pretty much being somewhat of a first responder, if nothing else, or at least there'll be his eyes throughout the property. They are not to attack anyone. They are only to report what's going on to him and when he feels comfortable enough to let her in on the secret, Inko. He really wants to stress the fact that I'm trying to be more nice. I'm trying to be a lot more, like a bad word, calm. Less trigger happy. But your show is all, yes, I understand you don't want to kill. You'll at least let me and the others live. Thank you so much. We will be forever in your debt, fuel, servitude, and all of that. Thank you so much. He's still being a little hesitant to really fully trust them, but also... Okay. Fine. If anything, all this means is that hopefully he can get more rest. You go seeing that the house that Izuku has literally bought them, let alone the land upon the house, she's a lot more. Uh, I really should ask him how he's doing this, as well as that thing that was above his head. But she's trying her best not to pry into his private life. Ugh. Man, if one more parents were like that. God knows what kind of how we would wreak. Now, when it comes to Izuku's next dungeon, yeah, Crawling Claws. Yeah. Izuku, upon seeing them, they stay completely still, making Izuku think, okay, maybe, maybe this is a stronger monster in which he's on the lookout for it. Want to realize, hey, wait, where's my healing potion? Wait, where, where's my satchel of gold? Him finally seeing, yeah, these hands are alive and they just robbed him. Him stabbing them clean through and burning them to a crisp, leaving nothing left, not even a scrap of ash. You know, yes, they do have claws, they do throw themselves at him. These are goes easily able to just swat them away like they're nothing but annoying gnats. Him, though, seeing the potential danger they pose, especially them being thieves, 
he also sees the potential of being very helpful. Like sometimes you want some things to be out of the villain's hands. Hmm. Let's see. Okay, okay. I can see you being more of a potential gatherer of things. <sighs> I really, really don't want to risk. Not screw it. Izuku pretty much just using them for whenever he does possibly require a yeah, stealing. Or at least, stealing things back. Though he does hate the fact that mm, these things are really thieves and annoying ones at that, especially when they're caught. They are still laughably weak. Maybe if someone does end up being very problematic, I could see a more useful approach. Hmm. Let's see. As then he starts to notice something. Hmm. Nah, I could see a lot more use for them as thieves. Maybe I should have them as a last resort just in case someone does break in. Steal from the thief before the thief leaves our potential residence. In fact, I could pair them up with the awakened shrubs. That way, if someone tries poaching or stealing, yeah, that actually works perfectly. And yes, this actually does end up being a rather symbiotic relationship. Just in case someone does decide, okay, let me steal this from this. The regular shrubs, perfect camouflage pretending to just be regular shrubs as the thieves are very very low on guard yeah the crawling claw I'll take that back and yes Izuku is very pleased the fact that he didn't have to kill every monster he faced so far they pretty much slaughter everything else last time. <laughs> yeah. But now, the fifth dungeon he goes towards. This one is actually a large ass open area, making him think wait, am I outside? As he sees. Yeah, uh, pretty much a town. With countless citizens and people wondering what's going on here. Oh yeah. He has not much. It's like, how are people here? Are they real people or are they just NPCs? Him learning more and more video game esque terms trying to really get his bearings of okay what's going on here sadly Izuku does have to worry about the fact that alright these are actual people just like the monsters are actual monsters hmm but he does notice that they are still weak as hell. Hell, someone tried to start a fight with them, he just pimps back them and they get flying into a wall. 
people begging him to forgive the nonsensicalness of this poor foolish man. Him was like, I don't want to kill you guys. I see no real reason to. As yes, he does see that they are very weak. And wondering, okay. You also seem very timid for some reason. As people cower in fear of him, they also seem to be very malnourished. Especially the adults. The other children do have more weight on them. It's clear that they're clearly not eating as much as they possibly should. So, Izuku goes to see what's going on. He goes to the town hall and sees that while everyone else is pretty much mm, starving, uh, the one in charge is pretty much... Hmm, what's the best possible analogy? He's the pig of pigs. He, he is... He has been eating his weight every day. Easily. He has meat, vegetables, fruit, spices, all that shit. Honey, he has a whole damn feast for him and everyone else who's around him, except for his servants. I'm seeing that some of them are very close and kind of starting to fall either asleep or completely unconscious due to the hunger. He says, oh, he approaches this bastard. He's a uh, ooh, there's to approach me without having a gift. What? Yes. <laughs> you see, unlike those peasants that I rule over, I, I am of a higher caliber than they are. So, Izuku just drawing his katana, like, okay, I've heard enough of that. Excuse me. What, what pray tell are you doing? Oh, I'm going to kill you. What? Oh, oh, please, you can't do that. Can't I? No. No, you can't. Look what happened to me if I were slain today. And besides, my god will take care of you. <coughs> Seize him! He's <laughs> go easily being able to gut chug them and pretty much... Their armor caves in with each of Izuku's punches. Him thinking, okay, yeah, you guys are hella weak as well. And then they down health potions. Which Izuku, though he has some, he did an appraisal and was like, these things are expensive. Especially in, in his world. You can only imagine how expensive they could be here. So, hmm. You guys are doing this on your own volition, aren't you? What? You're not doing this because he's forcing you. You're doing this because you, you like the perks. Well, we eat well, we're treated nice, and yeah, what about everyone else? What about them? Izuku seeing is, yeah, you guys are just reaping the benefits of someone else's hard work and whatnot. And you are thriving while everyone else is just trying their best to survive. What happens if they die over? They'll make more. Izuku having no more sympathy, no pity for the knights. Oh, he's 
guards, those, you know, to be honest, call them guards. And the Lord of this territory he's found himself in. In which, he slaughters them all. Even some of his Echo Knight, so he can pretty much do a double tap on the Lord. <sighs> now that was fun. Him looking at the guests and see that, yeah, they have pretty full guts as well. Why their little input on the matter? I'm from the such and such kingdom as well. I, I'm not. I, I didn't like this lord here either. <laughs> wait, there's a kingdom. Him wondering. Wait, just how vast is this dungeon? Him being shown maps of different territories and him saying like oh my god this huh are you kidding me are you saying this this whole dungeon is the size of a planet him wondering so who this guy wasn't the final boss. Who was? As then he starts interrogating all the others. Realizing, oh, there's a king. Of course, I should have known. And the king allows this. The survival of the fittest here. The one with the most strength. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, okay, I get it now. So that's how things are. Uh, well, for giving me such crucial information, you may live. Really? Of course. I have no reason to kill you. Not yet. Thank you! Oh, don't thank me yet. Because if I find out that any of you are responsible for any wrongdoings against civilians, you will see me again. Or well, I guess you won't. What? Ugh. If it's that hard for you to understand, it means you won't see me coming and you'll just end up dead before knowing what happened to you. Seriously, I hate having to explain myself. You're serious. As a heart attack. Now, Go. As yes, the poor deceased lord guests run for the hills, back to their own territories. He's a good. He informs the citizens of the news. Hmm. I'm impressed. It looks like you did choose someone worthy of this power. <laughs> of course I did. I mean, what? If anything, he has potential. Oh, are you thinking about retiring? Hmm, that might be a good idea, but no. He just needs to accumulate. On the power. Let's see. Who's next on the list? Uh, my lord, but don't worry about it. Yeah, 
already have someone picked out. 